Hi, my name is Michaela Gower, and this is my case study over internet use violations for school law. I will be beginning with Category 1, Problem Identification and Analysis. Based on reading the case study, I know that Roosevelt High School, the incident where this study occurred, is located in an affluent part of a large city. Parents living in this area of the school have professional occupations such as lawyers and doctors, and students have access to the latest technology and fashion trends. Dr. Forbes is the principal of Roosevelt High School where he has served for the last nine years. He's very proud of his school and the reputation it has built for um, hiring the best teachers in the state. The most recent hire is Ms. Walker, who is a beginning teacher teaching specialized science classes such as zoology and genetics. And, um, she intends to create a structured classroom focused on academics. So because of the way that she is taught in such a structured way and because of the workload in her class, the students are experiencing some high levels of stress. Because of this, Dr. Forbes has received multiple phone calls from parents complaining of Ms. Walker's instruction. The parents share concerns that their students may not see, receive high grades in Ms. Walker's class, and the students in there are pushing themselves and taking higher level courses and are vying for valedictorian and salutatorian. So um, that is why many of the parents, I would think, have concerns with their children's grades. And so um, because of that, Dr. Forbes has shared strategies with Ms. Walker, but she has failed to implement them. Um, because of that, because she's not implementing those strategies, parents and students are still complaining of the workload and the structure of Ms. Walker's class. And on a three-day weekend, Ms. Walker returned to her, her apartment and began checking her email and received one that prompted her to go to a website where she found some inappropriate material about her teaching, the way she teaches, including cuss words. And um, the final comment read, who wants Miss Walker to disappear? Moving further into category one, what do I need to know? First and foremost, I need to know the internet safety policy in place at this specific school. Do parents and students sign this at the beginning of the year? And are parents and students aware of the consequences of breaking the policy? Secondly, did Miss Walker receive this email through her school account? And if so, does the district monitor all technology systems? Can the technology team trace the origin of the email? Moving further in, I'm going to identify the problem at hand. While in the case study, it was made evident to me that there are several students and parents who are addressing concerns about Ms. Walker's teaching. The concern for this case study is the problem that Ms. Walker has received an email from an unknown sender receiving, or er, which included threatening comments such as who wants Ms. Walker to disappear. And Ms. Walker felt threatened by these comments. So based on the internet safety policy, the sender could be facing consequences for his or her actions. Moving into category two, this is my proposed plan of action with appropriate steps for implementation. So first and foremost, I'm going to adhere to the internet safety policy. I will um, have a discussion with Ms. Walker on that Monday and decide whether she feels that the concerns are serious enough to um, allure the local police department and how she feels about that. And from there, um, I would take appropriate action and I would also contact the district superintendent to keep him or her on page on the same page. I would go ahead and contact the technology department right away to determine if they can trace the email sender and if there's any way we can um, rid the system of that email because we wouldn't want it getting out and causing more of a problem than it already has. So if the sender is found after all of this, he or she will have legal consequences to deal with, but they will also have consequences based on the school's policy. Continuing, the strategies I will use while implementing those steps is that I will respect the teacher involved and I'll show concern for her safety. I'll follow school policies. If needed, I will turn the matter over to the local police department. 
I will address the issue at hand in an ethical manner. Um, you know, I won't be discussing it with anyone else besides those people who are involved. And I will be respecting Ms. Walker. I will um, focus on creating a safe environment for all students. The category three, resolve the issues based on promoting the success of all students. So my resolution um, to the problem promotes success of all students by advocating for safety in the building. As leaders, it is our responsibility to create an, a safe and effective learning environment. And I am promoting student success by addressing the incident and following appropriate actions. The kind of behavior exhibited, which was cyberbullying, should not be tolerated in school buildings. And as a leader, I am standing up for what is right and showing support for one of my teachers. Continuing on, looking back to the data of the case study continuously and throughout this process leads me to forming a resolution. When Ms. Walker read the comments and reported the information, part of the data was that she felt <coughs> threatened when the site had a comment that said, um, who wants Ms. Walker to disappear? And so all threats must be taken taken seriously, and by showing that I care for and support teachers, I am striving to create a safe environment for all. Moving on, as an educational leader, I will stress the importance of digital citizenship, digital citizenship, and instilling those qualities in our students. In order to go about this, I will provide professional development opportunities for teachers. In addition, I will have a professional learning community dedicating to implementing those skills into our curriculum and this is a big one because as we are moving into this digital age incidents such as this one will become um, more prevalent and the way we deal with them will send a message and we need to um, as teachers and leaders impart knowledge on our students that what they put out there is permanent and will leave will be a part of their digital footprint forever in addition, I will work towards making policies more visible to teachers, students, parents, and the community as a whole, whether that be just distributing information or holding meetings throughout the year. Um, teachers need to have a strong understanding of the school's internet policy in order to align their actions appropriately so that when incidents maybe not of this magnitude, but those that occur within the classroom can be taken care of can be taken care of and followed through based on the school's internet policy. And um, also just maintaining um, and knowing that relationships are key in these sort of situations and um, within the school building. <clears throat> Category four, debrief, debrief the problem. What was I thinking, feeling, and valuing as I responded to this problem? I was thinking about the real problem at hand, which was the threat received. Although there was a multitude of information about Ms. Walker's instruction or um, complaints about how she instructed students or the workload she provided, um, <clears throat> the case at hand was focusing on the threat Ms. Walker received because there is absolutely no excuse for the action that the sender took by sending that email. I was feeling that this is an opportunity to educate teachers as a leader through providing professional development opportunities and communities to address internet safety and also to extend my own knowledge as a leader. I was valuing students and their safety. I was valuing teachers like Ms. Walker and her safety and I was valuing what was right for the school overall. Continuing on, what issues are still unresolved or open to further investigation? Um, something left over would be the legal actions against the email sender. Those would be determined by um, the local police department. The impact on the policy and the impact on school climate. And I would hope that this would be handled in a positive and professional manner and have a, um, a lasting positive impact on the school climate, meaning that um, it sent a message about how we um, interact online. Category five, reflect on standard five. How did I, as a building level administrator, demonstrate a sense of integrity and ethical behavior that serves as a model for all members of the school community? <clears throat> first, I put the needs of Ms. Walker, the school and the students first. Um, you know, 
and I put myself in Miss Walker's shoes and tried to understand how she was feeling as I um, proceeded with the case. I followed school policies to guide my action, and I took all concerns seriously. How did I, as a building level administrator, treat people fairly, equitably, and with dignity and respect? I did not make any accusations or assumptions throughout the process. Um, within the steps, um, one would have reason to believe that a certain student could be involved, but um, I took the appropriate actions before um, considering interviewing a student um, as part of my steps. I contacted the technology department for their expertise and let them answer the call on that because that is their world and their knowledge base. I acted as I would in the same situation involving different people and I think that is an important quality of a an administrator I, um, in treating people equitably and fairly. <clears throat> And finally, how did I, as a building level administrator, demonstrate a personal and professional code of ethics that inspires others to higher levels of performance? First and foremost, I handled matters promptly. I didn't drag it out and create it, create more of a, a monster that was already created. Um, I did so in a calm manner with the proper authority, and I reached out to the superintendent and, um, and um, kept him or her on the same page. I did not discuss the matter with anyone outside of who was involved. I kept it private. I took the knowledge from the matter to improve myself as a leader within the school and the community as a whole. So I took what I learned from this case and will apply it to my uh, leadership in teaching in the future. That is my case study for Module B. Thank you for watching.